Hey, I have more than 100 hours in this game, and most of those hours were spent at the dojo. And the reason why is pretty simple. This is the one place you want to go if you want to acquire some new combat styles, if you want to increase your bond level with some characters in order to unlock some new gear, some new armors, or I don't know, just get better at the game, especially if you want to later go to into the midnight difficulty where you get to fight multiple bosses and I think it's the best way you want to do things, you want to go to the dojo, you, you want to get familiar with the way the enemies attack you and then you have, you're going to have a better time and not die whenever you attempt some runs in the midnight difficulty. But the reason why I spent so much time at the dojo is not because I wanted to get familiar with um, the enemy's patterns, no, I just wanted to see my name on the leaderboard and <laughs> I know, I think this is the coolest thing about Rise of the Ronin, I think the game has strong um, assets, you know, multiple things going for it, but in my opinion, the most fun I've had was just trying to understand how those people were having 10k plus as a score because I've tried everything I could. I was just, I was sometimes playing flawlessly and I just couldn't do it. I think at some point I was about to give up because I assumed that one, either maybe they were, they were cheating or B, they were just doing something. They were using a gimmick, something I was yet to uncover. But here's the thing, this is not a PS, this is a PS5 exclusive, so the option where they get to cheat is out of the window because that's not possible unless <laughs> unless they are very, very good. So I assume there was something they were, they were doing that I was not aware of, something I needed to understand as well in order to get there also. And you can tell that after spending so much time, I actually succeeded in making it to the leaderboard. I'm, I'm only second place when it comes to um, fighting that one character and I gotta say the more you do it the better you get at it but it's not as easy as just going to the dojo understanding the gimmick and then having a high score it's way more difficult than that and believe me it is going to take you multiple tries it's going to take you hours just to get your name onto the leaderboard only for someone to outscore you within seconds <laughs> It will drive you crazy. So the point is not just to, um, I'll say, no get hit. It's not. It's not just about not getting hit. In some capacity, you need to get lucky. You need to get lucky with the way enemies will attack you. And I just didn't understand that. I thought I, I just had to defeat enemies as fast as possible, but that's just not what you want to do. You know, there's more. Um, there's more things going on in the background and. In Rise of the Running does a great job when it comes to helping you understand its mechanics. All you have to do is just go into settings and if there's something you are unsure about, well, I'm pretty sure you're going to find the answer there. Everything is explained when it comes to locations, characters, um, mechanics. So what I'm looking for is in the facilities option, sparring. I really wanted to understand what exactly I was supposed to do, you know, and I figured there are three things you want to target when it comes to the dojo. If you want to, to have a high score, three things you need to target time, damage, sustain, and technique. So, right off the bat, I wished they chose a different name for technique because I assumed at first I didn't read, I assumed that technique was supposed to be me using as many uh, tricks, as many skills as possible, but that's not that. It's just about performing cutter sparks, you know, parrying, and just performing critical hits. The easiest part is not getting hit, because the more you play, the more familiar you get with the character pattern, the better you're going to behave when it comes to, you know, counter, counter sparking. The time, this is where the difficulty um, starts, because you need to have a low I mean you need to be you need to be able to perform I mean defeat the enemy within a certain time the problem is if you kill the enemy too fast if you def if you defeat them too fast then you won't be able to perform many counter sparks so right there that's the issue 
that's the issue because sometimes in my opinion sometimes the problem is not you you need to get lucky only some strings will allow you to both perform color sparks and make it in time it all comes down to luck and i figured that the best martial skill you could use when it comes to the dojo you know it's not you don't have to use it oh hello there you don't have to use it but doing so will help you a big time you know because i've, I've tried using every single weapon again i've spent some time at the dojo and in my opinion this is a gimmick this is what made the difference between me being at, on, on, at the 14th place and not be making it to the leaderboard so it's called a nothing flame and it's a it's a veil art you unlock if you i don't even remember who exactly you defeat but it's the one thing you will need if you want to make it far at the dojo so be sure to equip it and <laughs> at first listen i i was making a build and i thought to myself what if i get to use it at the dojo I wasn't sure it was going to work because the weapons you use at the dojo are, are non-lethal weapons. They are made of made out of wood, and I was confused as to how a piece of wood would be able to set the ground on fire. But this is video game logic. We don't ask those kind of questions here. <laughs> so yeah, those work as well at the dojo. You don't have to worry about logic now. Nah. So that was the gimmick. I had to use that one skill, which is great when it comes to. Um, killing, killing, killing enemies fast. That's one thing. Again, you don't have to use the skill, but using the skill is going to is going to help you. You know, feel free to use something else. If you do use something else, I would like to know because it's all about sharing here. It's all about competing, and I'm sharing this secret because I want to I want to help you make it there too in case you are interested when it comes to how the leadable, the leadable works and if you want to also make it there it's all about helping the competition and yeah just share your knowledge and let's move up together so an earthly flame is great but it's not the answer you know it's it, it, like i said it's more intricate than that the second step is being lucky and you, is, this is the part where you're going to have to restart multi like the encounter multiple times because you need the enemies to be aggressive and the, this is what this is what I figured. You want you may want to use a combat style, a stance, which is ineffective. The reason why is the game says that it's ineffective, and the way the enemies are going to behave whenever you use um, ineffective stance is whenever you perform the counter spark, they are not going to stop attacking you. They they are going to keep being aggressive, which is something you may want. Let's say, for example, let's take this guy, for example, Ryoma Sakamoto. In this encounter, you're going to notice that multiple times he will hesitate to attack you. And when that happens, it's already over. And I want to say that you will not make it because those two or three seconds of hesitation, this is defeat. There is no, there is no way you're going to, to recover. One second is the difference between maybe the, one, the first place and the third place. So whenever they waste your time like that there is no way for you to make it back so you have to restart this is why i said that you need to be lucky this train for example is really good if he performs attacks like those you can perform multiple counter sparks you know and eventually break his key his meter his posture and then perform a critical hit that's what you're looking for but sometimes they will back off they will perform one attack which is like a red attack which is not great red attacks are not great because Whenever you push them back by color sparking, they will be stunned for a longer time. And if they are stunned, it means they are not attacking. See, it's like I said, it's more complicated than just uh, using an earthly flame or just having the best possible time. You need <laughs> everything to go right. And sometimes, no matter what you do, it's not going. It's not up to you to decide if the run is over or if you're going to make it, right? And I don't, I don't really like that, you know, I feel like the enemies should be more aggressive. Sometimes they, they will borderline just go back and <laughs> it's going to drive you crazy. And there are some, I'll say, characters that I really love fighting, like um, Yeshu, Yeshu something. I forgot his, his um, 
his last name, but he's very aggressive and it's great. It is great. If you use an, an, an ineffective stance against this guy, he is going to be relentless. You're going to perform multiple counter sparks. You're going to um, break his key, his posture, and then you're going to perform multiple critical hits and everything is going to click. I think it's, um, wait, give me a sec. I think it's Yeshu. Uh, it's not it's not that guy Yeshu No, yeah, Teshu Yamaoka. This guy is amazing, you know, and he has that one string where he starts attacking you um, From the front and then he goes sideways and he keeps going if you manage to 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 counter spark to to parry every single one of those of, of, of every single move within that string, you're going to be able to perform, I think, more than 10 counter sparks within seven seconds, which is huge. Again, it means that you can just focus on just defeating him for the lead, for the second half of the fight. See, that string is great. If, if you manage to just um, parry every single one of those moves and finish with the red attack, trust me, you're going to be halfway there when it comes to being on the leaderboard, even having the first place. And that's basically what you want to do for every single encounter. You need to be lucky. You need to identify the strength you need you need in order to to perform as many counter spikes as possible. On that run, you will notice that I still got hit. You know, I didn't I didn't get perfect um um the perfect score when it comes to damage because I got hit, but it didn't matter because I was able to perform multiple fair parries and multiple critical hits, which is why I was still able to outscore most of the people out there. So if you don't know, like me, because I was clueless as well, if you don't know what is expected of you, you will just keep bashing your head against the wall and you will not be effective. I actually ended up, if I'm not mistaken, as of right now, I'm still tied up, I think. <laughs> I'm still tied up with um, for, for, for first place when it comes to this specific encounter. And since some other encounters, I'm third or second, you know, it moves very fast. By the time you make it to the first place, maybe someone else find a, like, was luckier or performed better. So maybe you'll see my name on the leaderboard over there, or, or maybe <laughs> Lionel decided to <laughs> just go, to just be... This is the crazy part. This is the craziest part. That night, where I was like, I was like, actually, I was actually trying to ask call uh, the first guy or the first girl in, in, the, in the first part. I was able to get ten thousand points, and immediately my um, my score was beaten. Immediately, yeah, right after that, <laughs> that was crazy. So people are actually competing, and it's fun. My goal at the end of the day is having my name on every single leaderboard for every single encounter and at least now i know what i need to do what i usually do is i would use a stance which is ineffective that way i know that upon pairing they're going to keep going that way i don't have to worry about the enemy just backing off and wasting my time they're going to keep going and then i can focus on defeating them using uh, an earthly flame and you really want to perform uh, critical hits as well you know those are very good so only two things I'm, i mean only three things don't get hit that's the easiest part then uh, for the first half of the fight focus on pairing and then make it in time i think the sweet spot when it comes to like uh, the time is 25 seconds and if you're able to make it to 25 seconds that's it you win Hopefully, you'll be able to also have your name up there because I do want to see you and yeah, let's start competing.